On this episode of Road Dirt, we review the Bell Helmets Eliminator line. Stay tuned. is brought to you by Law Tigers Motorcycle Lawyers. Find them at lawtigers.com. Hey, this is Rob with Road Dirt, and we have been given the opportunity to evaluate a couple of Bell helmets from their Eliminator line, courtesy of J.C. Maldonado and Bell Helmets USA. And um, so um, we thought this was an interesting opportunity to really showcase a modern helmet that really has, I guess I should say, very vintage automotive racing roots. And um, so we uh, got in touch with JC and he sent us a couple of helmets for us to take a look at and ride with. Um, I've actually already been riding with mine. This is the uh, Stockwell edition. I think it looks pretty cool with my Triumph Bonneville Street Cup. And um, we recently received one for Phil as well, so we're going to take a look at his. His is the uh, Vanish Matte Black, and when we pull it out, you'll see why he wanted it, because it actually matches his motorcycle. So, unboxing one of these Bell helmets. The cool thing about, about this particular model line is, is that they give you a couple of um, screens that cover these vents that are on top of the helmet that I'll show you in just a moment. So as we pull everything out here, this is the Bell Helmets Eliminator. I'm going to set the box out of the way as well. Uh, nice case that it comes in. Very, very uh, well done case. Let's get this out of here and have a look at this butte that we picked up for Phil as well. There's about, I want to say there's about eight different model versions in the Eliminator line that um, have a different look to them, uh, different design, but they're all the same as far as their features. The Vanish Matte Black actually has got um, red accent striping across the back and around the, um, around the base and uh, around the chin as well. Very cool. They lock and snap in the front, and um, it's a type of snap that is not going to open if you go down or uh, in heavy winds and things like that. It's not going to get wind underneath it and pull it up. It's a uh, class one um, racing style um, visor, very clear visor on it, and um, uh, very, very well made on the inside. One of the things that I really like about this too is that it's got a magnetic fastener for the excess um, um, chin strap that you have right there. It just snaps right in so you don't have to worry about trying to tuck it behind or find a place for it or tie it around something. And um, so very well made helmet. Now here is the interesting thing. These vents that are on the top are non-adjustable. They don't have a slider to open or close them. And um, because putting them up there like that would have, uh, uh, I think it would have diminished their rating that they've got on the back here um, from DOT and the uh, ECE rating. So that's where these vents come in handy right there. Uh, I've actually already snapped one on for colder riding this winter and they just snap right in over those and you can easily pop them right off and stick them back in your saddle bag or um, in your tank bag or something like that and they cover it up. They, they cover the vents that way and um, one of the things that we notice that they lack is they don't have adjustable um, vent ports here. You can't close and open them on um, the chin mount ones as well as that up there. And I asked JC about that. Why, why would they not have open and closing vents, you know, for different types of weather conditions, as well as, if you notice right here, there's no chin flap. There's no chin curtain right there. And out at speed, you'll get a little bit, you'll get some wind up underneath there if you don't have a fairing. 
Well, I asked JC about that. And he says, well, you got to understand the Eliminator is, is based on um, Bell's automotive racing routes. Bell Helmets Company was actually founded in Bell, California. It's not named after an individual. It's named after a town. And uh, the guy that, that originally started Bell Helmets had an automotive repair shop kind of, or an automotive parts store, basically what it was. And he started selling helmets and pretty soon got some design ideas and, and designed his own um, race helmets for automotive racing back in the 50s and on into the 60s. And um, next thing you know, man, it just took off for him. And he was, he was manufacturing helmets more than he was selling automotive parts. And the Eliminator, basically in their lineup, is kind of a throwback to the automotive early racing helmets. The liner and everything is really extremely well built and very uh, very good at, at noise canceling. Um, but they left the, the chin curtain off and, um, and the design of it with these vents up top is a, kind of a tribute, kind of an ode to their automotive race helmets that they made back in the 1960s specifically. So it kind of explains it. What I've done to mitigate um, getting the, the chin, uh, a lot of chin turbulence up underneath there is uh, by wearing a, a bit of a neck gaiter. And of course, because it doesn't have a transitions visor or something like that, an inner visor that you flip down, that would also in decrease its rating as well, is that by putting on a pair of, of sunglasses or something that fits up inside there, um, it really kind of mitigates a, a lot of the wind turbulence that you would get up underneath the helmet um, you know without that so I found that works well for me and uh, actually if you do wear sunglasses they've actually got little openings inside right there to, that they build into the liner to stick the glasses in and through so they don't fit weird or push on your nose too hard or something like that so they took that into consideration so uh, that this, these are two examples of the Bell Helmets Eliminator line. Let's go get some road footage with them on. All right, time to load up and suit up and get the Stockwell edition on. It is a really good fitting helmet. The padding and everything is just right in it. But of course, my bike without a fairing like Phil's, which is... It, 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 it's more handy to actually have a bit of a neck gate or something that will break the wind from getting up underneath right there. And this is what I've been doing really for the past week or two that I've had the helmet. So it, uh, it works adequately for me. Nice snap right there. And we about ready to roll. All right, let's see how this bad boy fits his next cell for the old melon. Tell you what, goes on a lot easier than the uh, my other full my other full faced helmet for sure. Some less action there. It's clear. We're off to the races. First thing I notice is it doesn't fog up like my other full face helmet either, which for me that's a plus since I have to wear glasses, you know. I can find the magnetic deal. Got it. Right there. Perfect. I like that better than a snap, too. Feels good. Feels real good. And I got room for a microphone if I need it. Excellent. Let's give this thing a whirl.
So what do you think? What are your initial impressions riding with it? I have zero wind under the chin. You are exactly on point. The fairing blocks anything that comes up underneath. I mm -hmm. love the access under here. Uh -huh. uh, I really like that. For some reason, when I ride, my nose itches, so I have to scratch <laughs> it. And as odd as that sounds, that comes in handy every now and then to get up underneath and scratch your, scratch your chin or whatever. So, I mean, I actually love the fact that there's no chin flap underneath here. Hmm. Uh, the fairing has blocked all of the wind, so I have got no wind. It's very comfortable. The fit is amazing. Just, I feel really solid and secure in this thing. Um, I can still hear my Harley tunage, uh, which is great. And I've not had any issues with popping up the shield off of the button. I mean, it's, it's a hard snap, but I just basically flick it and it comes up pretty quick. So I, I know that you had a little bit of an issue with this. Maybe it's because I don't have my full leg, full gloves on. Yeah. But with just with my fingertips, I'm able to pop that thing up pretty quickly. So when we stop or you know, hit a stoplight or whatever. I've not had any issues with that either, so. The good thing about it is it's a solid snap. I mean, yeah. it's not gonna yeah, pop up in the not. event of high winds or, you Coming know, speed or, or if you have an yeah. off or something like that. It's it's gonna secure really tight right there. Yeah. So uh, it's a good fit. Yeah, I, I love the fit of it. The fit and the finish, the look the overall look of it. It's got a little bit of a retro look to it, which I yeah. really dig, yeah. but very, very functional. Do a little um, walk around here. It is a cool lid, the one you got. Yeah, I like it. I'm definitely digging it. It's going to be hard to put a sticker on this one. It looks so good in the matte black, you know? It's it does, man. It looks great. It. But yeah, I'm so far, I'm loving this thing, man. This is great. Very nice. JC, you guys are rocking it, Bell, man. Thank you. the Bell Helmets Eliminator line, the Stockwell and the Vanish Matte Black, two of about six or seven that they have in the uh, Eliminator line. And uh, you can check them out for yourself at bellhelmets.com. Uh, Cycle Gear, Revzilla, they all carry the Bell Helmets Eliminator line. And uh, they're discounted right now because by the end of 2022, they may be phasing it out. So if you like it like we have, um, check it out while, while you still can. We give them a two thumbs up. We both really enjoyed them and uh, they fit really well. They've got a great finish. Um, uh, Phil didn't mind the fact that it didn't have a chin curtain. I do, but I've been able to mitigate that. So uh, I think it's a helmet worth checking out. They have a great fit and feel and finish to them. And um, they're kind of that throwback to the automotive days of Bell Helmets racing. So this is Rob and Phil with Road Dirt. Ride life.